Greer, I wonder if you might share with us your thoughts about uh, the college football rankings from last night. Where were you when you saw it? Uh, what does it mean for you and the team? So I was actually working on a group project at the time when it came out, uh, and just the guy I was working with at the time kind of just showed me his phone and said, you guys are you know, the third team in the college football um, rankings or whatever, playoffs, and you know, it was really exciting, but I, I don't think it really means much to us. It's not going to help us win on Saturday, um, but it was really definitely a cool thing to see. Knee injury aside, just from a physical standpoint, how much better do you feel this season than maybe seasons past with, with the whole strength and conditioning program? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing um, is that we're getting stronger as the season goes on, which hasn't been that way my first three years here. Um, so it kind of gives you a confidence in your body um, is that as you're building throughout the season, you're getting stronger um, and you just have more confidence in what you're doing, whether that's cutting, being more physical at the point of attack, stuff like that. Did it help you recover any quicker? Or, or could you maybe tell, like, maybe it, it would have taken a couple more weeks had, had you not been in this program in, in seasons past? Yeah, I think definitely um, the strength going in before surgery, uh, the stronger you are, the quicker your recovery is. And so I think that had definitely an impact on it. But I think it was also the surgeon, the rehab, all those components also go into it. Prior to this year, what were November's like for you, just from a physical standpoint, just just so worn down from the, the previous Yeah, it was months? just kind of like hanging on. It was like every week it was like a race to Friday just so that you could get to Friday and then try to recover as much as you could before the game. And I think that now we're going in with fresh, you know, going into Saturday feeling better than ever, um, which is a big difference. Coach mentioned to yesterday about maybe what's some of the work you guys do in the weight room uh, be, be, uh, on uh, on Mondays. Like, what are some of the things that you guys are doing in there? Yeah, so I mean, we're we're squatting heavy. Uh, we're doing various lifts with our legs. So Monday's kind of our leg day, um, and so just going through various workouts, uh, making our legs stronger. You know, we never really did that before uh, during the season. Uh, we kind of stayed away, but we're putting a bar on our back and lifting heavy weight. Um, so I think it just goes to prove that like we can get stronger throughout the season. It's actually making us feel better, uh, even though we would think that you know we'd be even more sore, but that's not the case. Uh, Greer, right over here. Um, how did everything feel with the meniscus in this past game? Uh, it felt fine. Um, you know, it was definitely. I was only like two weeks out of the surgery, so it was more of a confidence thing, like getting back in there and running around and making sure that it felt all right, and it did. Um, I think the only scary part about the whole game was me and Niles kind of collided on the sideline. Uh, but it held up, and like I didn't have any pain after that, so that was a good sign. You were on the ground for a little bit there. What, was it was there pain, or was it just a scare of am I okay after that? I think it was just more of a scare. Um, just kind of that was the first real hit I took after the surgery, um, and I'm just glad my legs kind of came out from under me. But it just startled me more than anything. Were you wearing any kind of like brace or support or anything? For yeah, I was wearing a uh, like a kind of like a skin tight brace underneath my leggings. Guru, you mentioned the school project. How has the principals on the wall up there helped you in your academic career here? Yeah, so I think it's like a combination of not only like, you know, all those traits and stuff that help us with uh, winning football games, but I think it goes along with, uh, you know, everyday life um, and carrying those throughout everything. So if you don't have those, not am I gonna, only not going to see it on the football field, but I want to succeed in the classroom as well. We're here in the middle. Uh, have you noticed any uh, extra excitement for Coach Elko this week? Um, just with him facing off against his, his old team, and for you guys as uh, you know defensive players playing for him, is there a little more excitement among you as well to kind of get the win for him? Yeah, I think that like there's obviously more excitement along with it, but I think you know the goal here has been like prepare for this team as we've prepared for every other team, um, and obviously he has relationships with those coaching staff and those players that are important to him, and so that must be a tough dynamic for him. But as a coaching, we really haven't seen any change from him. It's going to be the same uh, Elko that we get every week in week out. Greer, I think there have been a couple of examples this season where an opposing offense has thrown something at you and it, it's almost like instant recall from what you practiced on Tuesday or Wednesday. Is that, is that something that you got a lot last year? And how does that feel when an offense 
run something and you know exactly what to do before the, the ball is even snapped? I mean, it's a great feeling just because you feel prepared, um, you're ready to execute, you know exactly what you're doing. Obviously, like there's tons of plays that you see throughout a game that you're not prepared for or didn't get that look during the week. But for the most part, our coaching staff does an amazing job of getting those important ones, those tricky looks to us before the game so that when we do get them, we can execute. Is there a, a good example where I think your your pick maybe against Miami of Ohio was one that you brought up, but something that happened last week or against USC that really captures that? Yeah, I think so. Like our focus on Thursdays is Coach Alka will throw together like a couple trick plays that we might see. And last week we saw a flea flicker um, by NC State, and we kind of just handled it perfectly coverage-wise. And that's just an example of how we had seen something. It might not have been the same exact thing, but we had prepared for it in that way. In those instances, does – Coach Elko call down, or is it somebody on the sideline that reminds you, hey, this might be an, an instance where they might run this, or is it on guys to just, hey, we practice this on Thursday? I think it's more on the guys because, uh, you know, they can't predict everything. Um, but I think for the most part, like, there are certain down and distances, tendencies that they've given us before a game that say, hey, look, if they get under center, they have more trick plays or something along those lines. Thanks. Yeah. Greer. Coach Kelly mentioned last night on the uh, selection, uh, the ranking show, uh, that you know the blueprint for, for this team's success changed uh, even from 2015. Um, how, when you, when you look at it, how do you how have you seen kind of the blueprint of, of this team change? So when you talking about blueprint, what are you exactly saying? I guess he was just talking about the way the program has operated. Um, you know, is different even from 2015, and he mentioned even from 2012 when to just sustain the success throughout the year. Yeah, I think I think that the biggest thing for this team is that like from like when we started in the spring with this new scheme, everything it was always like this very attention to detail that was lacking in previous years. So everything we did, whether that was a questionnaire, whether that was turning in your you know travel suit on Sundays before a certain time, like everything was we were all held accountable. I think that that accountability was huge for us in creating the blueprint you're talking about. So I think that the accountability kind of fostered everything else. And then we've talked the last several weeks about how you guys keep this going, how do you keep it going. Obviously, you've had two huge wins in a row against uh, teams that were ranked in the top 15. Um, how do you avoid um, you know, this being a trap game against Wake Forest? Yeah, I think like they always talk about avoid the noise. And so I think it would like almost even better if we just had kind of like a big bubble around us and didn't listen to what anyone else said. Because um, like the biggest thing for us is just to prepare like we prepared every single game this year and we'll go out and we'll be a good victory on Saturday if we do that. Um, and so like it's just about kind of focusing on us uh, and doing all the little things. How hard is that though? Uh, because obviously you, you may have you may try to put the bubble up, but that's not exactly easy, especially when you're going to class and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a hard task to do. Um, but this team, this whole year, everyone we've gotten um, since Georgia, we've just always kind of put our heads down and gone to work. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. How, how has things changed in terms of, you know, when you're going to class, people talking to you or walking around campus versus maybe the beginning of the year? Yeah, I think there's a different buzz um, around campus. And, you know, you go to a class with these guys that are always saying, congratulations, you know, that wasn't being said before Temple. Um, and so, like, it's just a different, you know, environment that, you know, you're going to class with people now that are saying, like, oh, you guys are number three. And it's just, like, one of those things where you got to, kind of say thank you, you know, but like you c it can't go that far with it. Um, and just kind of, kind of, like I said, put your head down and just keep going. And then finally for me, um, Wake Forest's quarterback obviously has a lot of experience. What, what makes him uh, a, a challenge? Yeah, so I think he runs that offense. Uh, he can make all the throws. Um, he's good on his feet. Uh, he's just like kind of a dual threat. And he just kind of controls the game. He's been a starter for four years. He knows what he's doing. And I think that's kind of what his thing is, is he just kind of um, understands where he needs to be effective, and he does it. Gary, you got uh, the hat sitting right there in front of you. Just what does that, this whole campaign mean to, I know it kind of revolves a little bit more around Josh and what he's doing, but it's the team thing as well. Just uh, what comes to mind when you think of this campaign you guys are doing? Yeah, and so like, 
this campaign is for Josh, um, but it also includes the whole team. But that just goes into his character. Like Josh wouldn't want this to be just about him. He wanted it to be about the whole team. And so this is how it kind of all ties together. Um, and it just goes to show how humble the kid is, and he earns everything he gets. So um, for us, it's just, you know, we're willing to support him because he's a great kid, great athlete, uh, and he deserves the award. Um, Julian Love, uh, one of the more, I guess, bubbly personalities, I guess you can say, on your team. Uh, what's it like just playing with him and, and how he's able to keep you guys up? Yeah, I mean, he's an amazing player, um, and he's kind of got that energy around him. Um, and he kind of just brings it to practice every single day, and it's contagious. You know, guys look at him flying around on the field just having a good time. And it just brings a good environment uh, to want to play and get better. Um, he's a great guy. Thank you. Yeah.